can't miss. Did he just catch fire? Or did he change the guy's the made some great or? catches, too. And uh, uh, what can you say? The guy made some plays when he had to. Guys around him stepped up. And uh, they got enough done today to win. 16th overtime game of the postseason, only the seventh time the home team has won. Was this aided by the officials? Well, there was something that Phil Sims said. He was told by the officials that also not only does your arm have to be going forward, but as long as you're tucking it back in, that's still considered arm in motion. Thus, Hall Coleman made his call. Well, I, the, the, the rule stinks, but... <laughs> Under the current rule, Walt Coleman made the right call. It comes down to this. Yes, it was a controversial call. Yes, Walt Coleman made the right call under the rule. As we'll see here, Brady's going forward, tries to pull it in. That counts as your arm going forward in motion, which is not a fumble. An incomplete pass gave him a chance to tee it up again. What's amazing about this is everybody's going to point to this, Ravi, in this football game. Comes down to this. Raiders didn't have the, they, they, they couldn't put it away, didn't have the fortitude to finish it. Brady kept battling, as did New England. They did. They're moving on to the championship game. They won because they earned it. They blocked better. They tackled better. Their quarterback made more plays in the end. That's why they're moving on to the AFC championship now, game. As good as the Patriots were, it's tough to uh, take any Whew. credit away from what the Raiders were able Not to kidding. accomplish. And how about Tom Brady, who had 94 yards at the half and ends up with 312 for the game? Not so always the... how you start, it's how you finish. He was awesome. So the Patriots advance, will advance the Sports Center when we come back. The Subway Post Game Show is sponsored by Subway. Fresh made sandwiches on fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. And welcome back to the Subway Post Game Show. Vinatieri riding off on the shoulders of his teammates. Bill Belichick moving on to the AFC title game. And a reminder for a complete statistical breakdown of tonight's Oakland New England playoff game. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. America Online users just enter the keyword. CBS Sports Line. Tomorrow at noon Eastern, a little more than 12 hours away, back with another special playoff edition of the NFL Today. Mike, Randy, and Jerry will join me for all the latest playoff news. And Marcus Allen reports on the state of Baltimore's defense and Deion Sanders sits down with Pittsburgh quarterback Cordell Stewart then at 12:30 Eastern the AFC divisional playoff game between the Ravens and the Steelers right here on CBS earlier today the Philadelphia Eagles advanced to the you know to Jet I mean it was a great throw in the corner in those conditions I mean you got you got to make him hit that and, and you know Gannon's good enough he hit it but uh, you know you got to take stuff away in the inside and that's what they did and and we couldn't get the toss game going, and, and uh, they just outnumbered us inside. They did a good job on the running game. Bill, in the first quarter, you went for fourth down on like the 35, 36 yard line, something like that. Just before the half, with a minute to go, you like to punt in the same situation. What's the thought process there? Well, we were going to get the ball to start the third quarter, uh, so we knew we had another possession coming in. Uh, you know, I didn't want to give them an opportunity because of the, you know, uh, Janikowski. Uh, you know, I didn't really want to give him an opportunity to, you know, try to get in any, any extra momentum there uh, at the half. So, you know, I thought if we could just keep the game where it was and, and uh, you know, much as I would like to have gotten a little more out of that uh, out of that drive, I just felt like it would be taking a little bit too much of a chance to, to lose some momentum and lose some points there at the end of the half. We were going to get the ball to start, and, you know, I thought we could regroup and, and uh, you know, maybe get things going. There was a, long, a lot of football left at that point. But tomorrow, yeah, we'll start working uh, on, on uh, you know, Pittsburgh and Baltimore tomorrow and then uh, probably split the staffs up so that, you know, we, we cover both of them, uh, you know, as far as we can, put a couple guys on, uh, you know, on each side of the ball, put a couple guys on one team, put a couple guys on another team, and then, you know, once it's decided, then we'll, you know, at least, at least somebody will have a little bit of a head start. But, you know, they're both great football teams and, and uh, you know, real good defensive football teams as well, so. Um, you know, but we're happy to be able to play whoever we get a chance to play. Well, I think the conditions obviously were tough. It, it, it really was hard to throw the ball outside. Uh, I think all, the throwing game outside the numbers was tough. The running game outside was tough because, you know, the player starts, the, the running back would start laterally and then have to cut it up. And, and it was just hard to get real good, consistent footing to make those cuts. So, you know, the best plays were the downhill plays. And, and I know Garner hit a couple outside, but he was able to hit them downhill. You know, we didn't do a real good job on the force a couple times. And, and you know, Garner's a, he's a terrific runner. And, you know, he was just able to get out there and outflank us. But, you know, that part of it was tough. So that it, it took that away. I think the rest of the game uh, was you know, we, I mean, it was harder to execute, but we still called what we, you know, what we practiced. Uh, you know, like I said, other than some, a couple of those routes that, that we worked on, we put in uh, similar to what we did last year in the Buffalo game. 
Coach, would you characterise the play of Tom Brady for a young man in his first playoff game? Well, I think that, uh, you know, Tom and, and the whole offensive team struggled a little bit early. Uh, you know, we, we had a, a decent first drive, and then we had, uh, I think, maybe one first down until the drive right before the half. So, you know, we, we were kind of struggling to, to get into a good rhythm and get it going. But, um, you know, when we got into the second half, we moved the ball better. And then, of course, in the fourth quarter, we went to the no huddle. Then, uh, you know, was, that's where we had most of our success. And, you know, Tom did a real good job at that. I think you got to, you know, you really got to commend him for, uh, you know, the poise that he showed under pressure in the situation, you know, handling those tough conditions and, and uh, you know, just hanging in there because that's, you know, that's what he does. You know, he he might have, a, you know, a bad play here or there. He certainly had a couple today. But, you know, he, he battled right through them and, and just hung in there and, you know, started making some good ones. Okay, thanks. Thanks, fellas. How big can you go? How big was the game time field goal? Probably the biggest kick I've ever kicked, but I tell you what, all these guys did a great job to help me out to get the ball down the field. Hey, they got a lot of heart in this team, but no quit at all, that's for sure. And then tell us about the game winning one. They made it easy for me. They got it nice and close and they cleared the field off for me. That was the easy one. The other one, they did a great job. It's awesome. Did you know the game tying one, as soon as you hit it, it was good? chance of getting there. Didn't have a lot of extra room, but felt pretty damn good. It's a, it's a total team win. I mean, defense played huge. We needed those big stops. Adam hits those field goals. Um, offense comes through when we need it. Uh, just so proud of so many guys, man. I mean, people just step up, continue to step up when we need them. And, you know, snowy, late at night, you know, we played in rain. You know, it, it doesn't matter to us. We're just, it's all about winning. It's all about team win, the Patriots. Your thoughts on the controversial call and the fumble a second? It hit me and, you know, I was, I, I was trying to get rid of the ball, so I'm glad they ruled it the way they did. Let me tell you something. Joining me now is Patriot defensive back Otis Smith. And Otis, it looked like you guys had lost this, but you never gave up. Well, we figured if we can keep the game close, you know, and a few things go our way and, you know, we can come up with a victory. But, you know, that's what Bill had been saying all week. You know, let's keep it close and, and see what happens. You know, I know they had a tough time with, with close victories. Um, and, you know, that's what we did. We kept it close and was able to come up. Adam had a big foot today. You guys were on the sidelines crossing your fingers, probably praying for Adam's kick. Well, there was praying coming from all over the stadium today. <laughs> um, but, he, you know, he, he's pretty accurate in, the, in this stadium, you know, even with the snow. You know, he did it last year in Buffalo. He did it this year in Buffalo. And uh, um, and he's, he's done it again versus Oakland today, especially here in in his stadium. And he's very accurate here. And, uh, you know, it was, it was huge. It was huge. Talk about Brady's touchdown. I mean, you know, he didn't have a great day, but he came through when it counted. Well, that's what, what good quarterbacks do. They come through when it counts. You know, when he have to make a play, you know, he went out there and he made one, got a touchdown for us and put us into the game. Have you guys realized you're one game away from the Super Bowl? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. Hopefully we're back on this field again next week. Who would you rather? Yeah, so next week means the Baltimore Ravens. Then. Well, I'm a Ravens fan right now. <laughs> All right, Otis. Go right, celebrate. Thank thanks for having me. All right, hey, thanks. Scott, Otis Smith, I guess, let's go back to Bob Lobel. Bob? All right, Steve. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, you got to be exhausted from just watching that game. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just such a feel-good feeling after just seemingly totally out of it. Not easy being the fan. Christina Hager's down mm -hmm. in Foxborough and has a chance to talk to some of those fans after the game. But uh, she's wearing a smile like everybody else. I guess it wasn't wearing silver and black when they left the stadiums. Christina? You're right, Bob. What a game this was. It was only about an hour ago we saw the fans filing out of here somberly. What a difference now. A big celebration here at Foxborough Stadium. This was just the kind of win the fans were hoping to see tonight. Road to New Orleans, baby! Road to New Orleans! Before the game even started, they were primed for victory. All right, all right. But either way, these diehards were just happy to have made it this far. A championship playoff game to watch at home under a confetti free fall courtesy of Mother Nature. Win or lose is a great season. Seeing Brady come in and take it all away. I really enjoyed it. I would never have predicted this. Uh, I, was, I, I predicted 8-8, eight eight, so I've been uh, happy that I'm wrong.
In the parking lot, the tailgate party was as festive as ever. Fans from both teams, but it's the New Englanders who really know how to have fun in the cold. Bonfires and hot food, so there's a little snow on those ribs. This is what football's all about. Seats five and six right there. For season ticket holder Charles Little, one of the last chances to wipe the snow off the seat he's been cheering the Pats in for 17 years. It's a little emotional, uh, spent a lot of good times here. Uh. And can. And the way they will now continue to celebrate. Extra security here tonight just in case the crowd gets rowdy. State police tell us they have had to make seven arrests, but they are not expecting any trouble. After all, it is a happy crowd here tonight, Bob. All right, Christina, thank you very much. Good job, Brady and Vinatieri after fourth quarter heroics and overtime as well. Instant uh, folk heroes of biblical proportions and our coverage from Foxborough is far from over. We're getting more player reaction right now and we'll bring you that sound as it comes in and right after the newscast, a special Saturday night edition. We'll call it Saturday Night Fever Sports Final. <laughs> this is one show you're not going to want to miss because it feels real good. Okay. I mean, certainly does. All right, thank you. Bob. Got it. All right, Bob, thanks very much. The other big story tonight, obviously, the weather. That's right. A stay As we felt like, uh, you know, even though we didn't win the toss, we felt like we, our coverage team would go down there and give us a good, good cover, and, and our defense maybe go three and out and get the ball back, but that didn't happen that way. So. You hate the pro rule where only one team gets a number nine. You What's hate that? the pro rule where only one team gets a number nine. No, I think it's the right one. So. But you don't get it, the other team doesn't. Did you get progressively tougher to throw as the game went on for you guys? You guys started had several good series early and you got it seemed like got tougher later or not? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. I mean, obviously the conditions were certainly weren't uh, as conducive, but if you, you know, we felt like we had an advantage uh, uh, throwing the football because, you know, the, the pass rush wasn't uh, as much of a factor. We felt like our guys uh, knew where they were going to make their cuts and the breaks. Uh, and we felt like that would be an advantage. And I think you certainly looked at what they did to us tonight on the other side of the ball. You know, they threw the ball uh, effectively at times when they knew, you know, uh, their guys were able to come out of the breaks and, and uh, you know, they, the footing, you know, you know, was a major issue. I think you know you saw Tory James slip a couple times, and, and uh, you know, the advantage, in my opinion, in that situation is the offense. There's no question. So quarterback to the winning quarterback Tom Brady wasn't very impressive in the first half and the second half especially in that critical drive when he went nine for nine he got the Patriots where they needed to be which was in the win call and here's Tom Brady speaking we started to move today. the ball a little bit we still didn't you know make as many plays as we would like but you know it's just great to come up with the plays when we need them and to win the game Tom did you think the game was over when Winston knocked the ball out uh you know he hit me I, w I wasn't sure I wasn't sure I didn't you know, yeah, I was throwing the ball. <laughs> Looking at the left, throwing, I was going to throw it, and he hit me as I was throwing. I don't know if the... How do you like that? <laughs> Two story, you're sticking to it. Right? All right. All right. Why were you so much better with the no huddle offense? Was it anything different? Yeah. Just, uh, just really productive when you went to that. I think a lot of times as a quarterback, you get into a rhythm. You know, you start seeing the coverage, the configuration of the, of you know, their secondary, and, and, you get comfortable knowing where the pressure's coming from, and you know you just get a feel for the drops and the throws. And you know a lot of quarterbacks are successful in that because you know you don't have to hand it off in between these these throws. So it's um, you know we we executed well all around. David Patton made some huge catches. Jermaine Wiggins made some huge catches. Line protected. Um, you know Troy as usual. Um, you know it's just proud of proud of everybody. Why were you able to connect with Wiggins so much tonight? He, um, he was getting open. He was getting open. He, I mean, he's, um, he's just one of those guys that you call his number and he seems to make a lot of plays for you. And, um, you know, you go into the game thinking we're going to be able to do some things and then you make adjustments. And Wig, you know, Wiggs was a part of our adjustments today. Tom, what's the feeling at this point for this team? No one expects you to be in the playoffs. No one expects you to be in the AFC Championship game. Probably with two minutes left, no one expects you to win this game. That's for sure. I mean, yeah. what's the feeling, the emotion of all this? Well, I would, I would say we're, we're, you know, we're a pretty confident group. We've been situations where we've been down late before. We've been needed a two-minute drive to either tie the game or win the game. We've gone into overtime. We played in bad weather. We played at night. You know, we've been through a lot of situations, and I think they, they've made us stronger. And at no point does the team ever give up. And we come in at halftime, and you know, guys are still confident we can win the game. So, 
that's what being, you know, that's why you play two halves. You know, it's one half you might not go out there and play as well. The second half you come out and you play well and you win it in overtime. And, you know, in playoff football, you know, when there's four inches of snow out there, you just got to do whatever you got to do to win. What's it like when he hits the field goal, a 47 yarder tied up, you go into overtime, you march right down the field, and you're just looking at your teammates with a smile, thinking, I, you know, I, we're here, and who would have thought it? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, everyone's congratulating each other before he made that field goal. I was like, it's not over yet. You know, as soon as that ball went through, it's just, it's a great feeling. Just because, you know, you know the, you know the feeling, you know the feeling, you know, of losing, and, and you don't want to experience that. And then, the, you know, to, to pull out the victory, you know, when you said nobody gives you a chance, you know, as it's probably been all season, um, it's that much better. What's going through your mind as you're waiting for the ref to review that play, knowing the season is basically down to one call? Um, I was, you know, they, they said they were reviewing it, and, um, you know, I looked up the, at the screen, and I thought, well, what's probably going to be our ball? And I just went over to Charlie and said, what's the next play? So. Yeah, I, I, I learn a lot every week. I learn a lot every week. There's so much to learn. That's the thing. Um, you're faced with different circumstances, different situations, you know, every week. And, um, you know, today it just was another part of the learning for me, just to continue to build and, you know, to be sharp, to just, you know, there's not a lot of times where, you know, you get in a game like this and you don't play perfect and you still win. And, you know, as a quarterback, you always want to play perfect. And, um, you know, try to evaluate where those imperfections came, you know, this time. The way that everything fell into place for you to be in this position and the way it fell into place for you to win this game, does anything surprise you about this team anymore? You know, not really. Not really. Nothing Nothing surprising to me. I, You sit in the locker room and, and you talk to a lot of these guys, guys like Roman Pfeiffer and, Terrell Buckley and Anthony Pleasant, and um, you know, you realize that these guys have been around the block. They've been on a lot of great teams, played with a lot of great players, and you know, everyone's here just to to get the job done. And it seems each week a different different numbers called. And you know, there's a consistency of guys like Troy Brown and Lawyer and Ty Law and you know Damian Woody and a lot of those guys up front. And then each week, you know, some guy steps up and just makes a special play. Today was. I thought David Patton had, you know, a heck of a game. Had some huge catches, huge first downs. It's just, it's fun to be a part of, you know, the team game because you celebrate with the team when you win. And um, just the camaraderie between this whole group is pretty, something special. What went through your mind with uh, your first touchdown there? As you, you know, spiking the ball there. Man, I fell on my face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to spike that thing hard, and, and as I was spiking it, my foot kind of slipped, and I figured I'm going down with the ball. So it was um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Final question. No questions. All right. See you guys. Well, Tom Brady's first action as a playoff quarterback. I have to give him a, a passing grade. Give him a P for for passing and, and winning. And Mike Shalen, the Boston Herald, rejoins me. And the biggest play of the game has to be not a pass that was completed, but a pass that was incomplete. Sure, sure. A fumble, an incompletion, call it whatever you want. Doesn't matter. When, uh, when Hollywood scripts are written in sports, things happen, you know? Uh, you know, you go back to that weird fumble uh, out of bounds uh, th that, that hit a Patriot player out of bounds and they got to keep the David ball. David Patton was David unconscious. Patton, right, he was unconscious on the sideline. And, and there was a play like that tonight where the ball hit two different uh, uh, Wiggins. And, and, Off of and Patton, Patton again. It's amazing. Uh, and, you know, you need breaks to win. There's no question about it. And you go back, you go back through almost every championship ride, and you'll see things that have to fall into place. And you just don't, you don't argue with it, you know? And, and when and something happens like that, there is one side that's absolutely devastating, and there's another side that's absolutely jubilant. We are the jubilant side, but the other side, well, they're not too happy. Charles Woodson and the coach talked about that now infamous call. Very proud of our football team and uh, very disappointed with the defeat. And uh, I'll answer any questions that I can at this time. John, the uh, fumble that was reversed, what was your opinion on that call? 
Well, it was obvious. I thought it was a fumble, but uh, the officials thought otherwise. Some bullshit. You know, that's uh, exactly how I feel. I feel it was a bullshit call. Never should have been overturned. Uh, the guy, you know, he pumped the ball, brought it back down. You know, he, maybe he was starting to want to bring it back up to throw it again, but I hit him before uh, he, got, he had a chance to do that. The ball came out, game over. Kind of let the air out of a lot of guys, you know. Uh, uh, we, you know, we were celebrating. You know, we knew it was a fun. You know, so uh, we, we weren't even uh, thinking about it being overturned. You know, so we, you know, we ready to pack it up and get the hell out of Boston. Well, it can be bull, whatever. But the bottom line is, it was an incomplete pass. The Patriots going to beat the Oakland Raiders 16-13. We'll go down to Foxborough again. Rejoin Mark Arkebloom, who has much more from the story. New England 16. while in this football game things did not look good I'm sure a lot of people probably turned the TV off and said you know what it's not going to work out for him this year nice try but maybe next year well that wasn't the case as we all know by now Adam Benateri boots him into overtime and in overtime they win the toss and then he goes and kicks the game winning field goal take a look at this because really the one that got him into overtime was the big one that was 45 yards in length the game winner Pats move the ball in a real comfortable position for Benetieri and of course buoyed by his big kick earlier. The chip shot, no problem. He was celebrating. Monty Paxton's on the ground doing snow angels. Look at this, a grown football player. What's up with that? Well, that's the kind of night it was here. Magical, having fun. You were a kid again. Here's some of the guys who finished and talked about the fact that this is nothing new for the Patriots. This is the way they've been winning games all season. <laughs> been working hard. It's been that type of year, but uh, we pulled it out. We stick together as a team, and uh, this is the result. This is a hard-fought game. This is a hard-fought game. The guys did a great job. We never quit. And that's all it is. That's what it is about this team. I'll tell you what, all the Patriots talked about that in between the last time you saw me and now I was in the locker room, sat down, talked with Damian Woody. You'll see a lot of that tomorrow night, no doubt. 